do some last minute work on that film, literally last minute. Um, so it is possible for composers to get involved in the last minute of any production. Film, TV, gaming or otherwise. Sorry. Yep. Uh, in the, I was in the movie for a fair while, and I basically Yep. Mm -hmm. Stuff is because there was a pub, there's a public performance element to that project. So, music for gaming um, would be required to go to Apple. That's the first thing I'd like to mention because people just not to take people off track. Uh, to answer your question, then, yes, come to us and say, hey, we like this sort of, with this style of track. Um, can you find other alternatives for us? Absolutely. Um, that's what we did with that Fireman project. They basically came and said, we need a rock track, we need these sort of dance tracks, what have you got? And we provided a compilation of, from each different genre of possible songs. So it wasn't actually our singer just throwing down limited options. It was giving the choice back to the designer who knew up front that, okay, Mushroom had told me that these songs are going to be easy to use, I'm not going to have hassles. So I still get to choose, but I know up front that these ones aren't going to give me any problems. And that's advantageous when you're trying to get um, when you've got deadlines. I guess my, my question is more geared towards do you act, do you approach things as more a title by title basis? So, okay, let's think of this song as we or can you do things as like take, tackle something as a project? So, um, tackle something as a project, absolutely. We've done Home and Away for 21 years. That's a big project. <laughs> this, um, last year, as an example, Mushroom, we provided music exclusively to about 600 episodes of Australian TV drama where those guys, just turning it over quickly, don't need the hassles. They need to know what music I can use, where I want to, and not face any administration hassles, clearances, whatever. So we get the job done. So if you've got a big project that requires a lot of music, absolutely. I have a Yeah, absolutely. Um, our own art people, they, they do go out and see bands sort of six, seven days a week, some of them. Um, especially one of our young guys who is just a regular gig guy, but they, you know, he's, they're totally involved in youth culture, whatever sort of entertainment that is. So absolutely, I mean, they'd, they'd love to come down and spend time with you guys and go through your projects and say, look, you know, here's some ideas, and absolutely. Oh, hang on, I've got, I've got one more. I've got six packs, I've got to have at least six questions. Although, Andy, you can't ask me any questions, I'm not giving you this in here. Are there any advice between like, radio and 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 radio so I'd suggest um, there's a price involvement in advertising world. In gaming, um, it's probably less of a major component. It's, it's more if you've got 10 minutes to fill and you want to use one piece of music, the instrumental version gives you more creative options to make it go longer, if that makes sense. Yep. Um, part of the approval process, yeah where you say, look, I want to use the song in the game, 
I just need to loop. Are you okay with it? And look, most artists are fine with it as long as you're not changing their lyrics or they might want to hear it if you're putting a dance beat behind it or something like that. Do we have to, I guess, a follow question then? Talking about Avro, because the reason that I thought we had to do with Avro and not more than nothing was mm -hmm. because we were doing just that. We were taking, say, a three minute track that the client had requested an instrumental version and then slicing it over 12, 15 minutes at a time. So, yeah. With, with that one, APRA would be talking to you from a public performance perspective, but then in that case where the, the track is being changed, that's when they would also be going to the publisher. APRA doesn't have to be able to expand Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, games, games just a, it's a mechanical reproduction and stuff. We're syn you're synchronising the music into your game and then reproducing that game. There's no if actual you, public... If you edit and change that music? Um, well, there's an approval process in that, yeah. But the, the, the artists, uh, they're creative people. They don't like seeing it. Yes, just like you guys wouldn't want to see a game chopped up and whatever. Yes. Songwriters just like to know what you're doing. That's all. I just want to clarify something there. Um, APRA also looks after the communication, right? Yes. And so if it's an internet or download a game, then uh, it Yes, online gaming is a little different um, but uh, once again it's uh, the, the public performance or the communication side of a game is going to be uh, less confusing than uh, the commercial side of, of online uh, sorry of on whole music um, a gentleman who's uh, handy to have about for this sort of discussion later if we have a chat Dean is actually on the upper board so um, all those communication issues. Here's the man. Please thank you, Adrian Murray. Thank you.